All right, uh, this tutorial is going to be on uh, using GameMaker 8.1 to create um, simple, easy video games. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, you can download uh, the GameMaker 8.1 Lite free, and that's what I'm going to be using. Even though there's uh, there's you can buy a full version very cheaply, and then there's uh, professional, standard, master collections um, that you can do a lot of great things with. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, just download GameMaker 8.1 and you install on your computer and then uh, we're going to open it up and we're going to create uh, the first tutorial that comes with this. Okay. Um, once again you can purchase it but you can learn how to use all this for free uh, which is what we're doing in our um, game design class oops want to hit a, uh, a new uh, nice clean slate here and you'll see right over here you have uh, a tutorial your first game and that's exactly uh, what we're gonna go through um, one of the first things you'll do is when you come in here for file you'll see that you have the option of having an advanced mode and that's what you're gonna want to use there's a simple mode and advanced mode and you're gonna want to use the advanced mode so you just click on it uh, just like it shows here and uh, this first game tutorial uh, is about making a simple game where you uh, squish fruit and avoid bombs okay uh, the first thing we're gonna do is add sprites and that's very simple we have a toolbar up here that has all types of uh, graphic interfaces um, this little pac-man looking thing allows you to create sprites and when you click on it you're given the option of uh, loading a sprite, which is an image. And uh, what I have is I placed um, all these simple um, available sprites and other resources from Game Maker that come free uh, into a, um, a folder called uh, Game Maker 8. And in the sprites uh, folder, You'll see that there's all a bunch of uh, free sprites given to you when you install the game. Uh, the one we're going to be using is for tutorial one, uh, which is their fruit game. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add um, the wall, which is this image right here. So you just click on it and hit open. And you can see this uh, right over here. Um, we're going to want to. Um, Call this um, we're going to want to call this our uh, SPR underscore wall uh, as described over here, and then we uh, we hit OK, and that places it right in our sprites over here. Um, and then we're going to want to do this for all our other uh, sprites that we're using for this game. So we load a sprite, and there's all this fruit in the bomb. Um, we want to keep everything just how it is. We want to give it a, a simple name uh, so that we can use it later. Uh, and that we can see it when they appear over here what these simple names are um, the reason why we use SPR underscore is to uh, signify that that's a sprite um, because what we're going to be doing later is, is we're going to be taking these and creating what are called objects that we can program with so the first thing we want to do is we want to load all our sprites now you could you could easily just leave this as sprite 1, sprite 2, sprite 3 but it just is simpler to uh, have a better understanding of what each of these sprites are if you give it a name um, and then later when you look at it uh, you'll be able to easily recognize uh, which sprites you used for which objects you created for your game. Alright, so we got the bomb image being loaded and 
Now the cherry. And our last sprite will be our strawberry. So there you have it. Uh, we have added all our sprites. And the next thing we're going to do is create objects. All right, so now we're creating objects. All these sprites we added are, are just simple imagery for our game. Um, if we want any of these um, images to interact in a game and we want to um, have them create actions or perform actions or do things, um, we have to create objects because what how this game operates is something called object-oriented programming. And um, we specify... Uh, that these are more than just simply some type of imagery in our game um, by turning them into objects so that we can attach programs to them. Um, and we do this by clicking on this uh, blue ball, which says uh, create an object. So when we click on that, you'll see it says sprite. There's no sprites. When we click over here to the side, uh, we're able to um, pick any one of the sprites that we have over here to create this object. And uh, one of the first things we want to do is we want to um, use our wall object and uh, once again what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to turn this into uh, an object and now it comes over here in our objects folder and uh, we want to uh, once again specify so that it's easily understood when we or someone else uh, tries to look at our programs uh, what these objects are and uh, we use I should have put an extra L there for wall, but that's okay. Um, we use our same uh, type of uh, simple coding uh, or naming um, to have our object underscore wall. And um, something we want this wall to be uh, is just simply solid so that, um, so that our other objects that we'll create uh, don't pass uh, through the wall. Uh, because obviously a wall is is supposed to represent uh, something solid, right? We don't we don't uh, you know want to consider a wall of error that we can simply pass through. We want to have some type of interaction with a wall, and so we're just going to create a, a solid object. And even though we can add all types of events and uh, actions over here, uh, we're not going to do that with the wall. It's just going to be a simple solid object that we use uh, to place in our game boards. All right, so um, we'll just hit OK. And uh, that uh, creates our wall object. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our Apple object by um, having some programming uh, take place in there. We'll just come over here again and click on our uh, blue ball which says create an object and now uh, we are going to look for our apple sprite and we're going to create an object that uh, we give the name um, obj underscore apple and you see once again this appears in our apple timeline and now we're going to uh, add some uh, some events and some actions that take place. So an event uh, we're going to start with is the create event so that in our game these these uh, Apple objects are um, actually created to exist in our game um, and we're going to give it an action of uh, when it is created um, that it moves all around all right so <clears throat> we can create it so that when it's created it only moves upward uh, randomly selected um, or as it's created it can only move either upward or downward 
or it could move just to the right or left, or we can have it go at angles. All right, this is up to you. Or possibly it could just sit there. Um, these are these are the different ways that um, as this um, apple is randomly created in a position uh, where it can go. Um, personally, uh, I enjoy it going at angles because we're going to have this uh, collisions take place. But for the tutorial purposes, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, have it go in any direction. And when it's going to when it is created and randomly picks one of these uh, eight directions to go in, uh, we give it a speed, okay? And um, the speed that we will give it is uh, eight for tutorial purposes. And then we hit OK. So now what we have done is uh, we've created an apple on the screen and it'll randomly pick a direction um, out of these eight directions that are given to us at a speed of eight. Uh, and if we leave it at this, it'll just shoot off the screen. Um, but what we're going to want to do next <clears throat> is we're going to want to use our wall. So we're going to add a collision. Um, and we can have it collide with other objects so that it either bounces or explodes with other ob with other Apple objects or wall objects. Um, what we're going to do for this one is the tutorial says to us, why don't we pick this wall that we're going to place on our background. And then um, under our events, uh, why don't we have it bounce uh, off the wall. And... We leave it not precisely uh, because we don't care and uh, against any solid objects, which we can make apples solid objects uh, simply by kicking on a solid over here so it would bounce off apples also. Uh, but we're going to let it pass through apples for the tutorial purposes. And <clears throat> the only solid objects we've created so far um, are the wall. So we have this. Bouncing <clears throat> off um, our walls and then just continuing to move around and bouncing off any solid objects that exist, which right now are uh, walls. Now we're going to add another event, and uh, the event uh, that we're going to um, add is going to be a mouse event. All right, so you can see we have um, all types of events, some of them are keyboards, some of them are pressing specific keys on our keyboard, some of them are releasing uh, specific keys on our keyboard. Um, we have draw tools and other ones. But what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have our mouse uh, tool. And when we click on our mouse tool, we have our option of um, pressing on the left side of the mouse or the right side of the mouse or if there's a middle. Um, or release when you release it, or um, we can mouse wheel up and down, which is the middle part. Uh, we can add joysticks in here, um, all types of actions for the joystick. Uh, but what we have for our tutorial right now is to have the left pressed. Uh, and when the left press, uh, something is going to take uh, place. And uh, what we're going to do when this left pressed so we're going to have it jump to a random uh, spot. And we see that right here. It says jump to random. So we hit jump to random. And um, when we go to uh, jump to random uh, in the form, press the OK button. It makes the apple jump to a random location. So just OK. That's fine. Um, because it's random, so it can go anywhere. Um, and then uh, we want to add a score. In order to add the score, uh, we come over here. We have our different tabs uh, where we have all different uh, actions we can add to this. So 
when we left press on the Apple objects, um, we can um, create all types of score events, lives, health bars. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a score to this. We're going to have the set score, and we want our set score to be 50. Now, if I just hit OK right now, this means that I'll get a score of 50, and no matter how many times uh, I press the Apple object, I'll have a score of 50. Say I had a banana object and I set the score to 100. That means if I clicked on a banana object, it would be 100, but then if I clicked on a, another Apple object, it would go back to 50. It would always be 50. So relative means that it will increase by increments of 50. So every time I click on an Apple, uh, 50 will be added. Uh, to whatever the score is, whatever the relative score is. So if I have different scores on different um, objects over here, on the strawberries, cherries, or bananas, or even the bombs, then every time I have a relative score, whatever my current score is will be added by this increment. Okay, so then I just say, okay, and that, boom. And by doing that, uh, I have now uh, created a... Um, object which is an apple that appears on the screen and moves with a speed of 8 in any of the directions that I've selected All right. if it hits a wall it'll bounce off that wall and if I press with my left mouse uh, it'll jump disappear and jump to a random position to be created again and then it'll set the score uh, by adding 50 to whatever my relative score is. So that's all I need to do for that. So now I hit OK. And uh, now I have uh, an apple object and a wall object. We go on to uh, create a room. Now this is real simple. All right, so uh, we have up here on our toolbar uh, this icon has uh, create a room so we click on it and um, we have here objects that we can place in our room um, and we have um, backgrounds that we can uh, put in our room all right so um, uh, we want to uh, add a background now uh, Or we'll just add that wall object first. Um, and we do that uh, under our objects. And when we click on our list, once again, uh, we see uh, we only have two objects over here. We have an apple and a wall object. And uh, if we click on the wall object, uh, the wall object appears. And if you click on the um, apple object, the apple objects appear. Uh, and they give us all types of uh, directions over here. Uh, but it's really simple. Okay, so um, basically what we do is here's our uh, wall object, and now we just click, boink, and there's a uh, wall. We can have a little uh, image here of what our uh, room will look like. Um, and what we're doing is we're just going to set a boundary for this game. All right, so, so what it's explaining here is we select our wall object, um, and then we're just going to um, create a basically a, a wall all the way around. Um, for to contain our fruits and our bombs uh, that bounce around in this game. So, so what this does is this uh, simply creates a um, a small room, uh, thirty-two by thirty-two. Right. And we can uh, change the size of our room. You can do anything you want. But all we're doing now is kind of, you can play with any of these uh, up here. And we'll, we'll do in later tutorials, we'll see different things. But all we're doing is we, was we have uh, all our solid objects. So, so these are just objects that are solid, right? It, it could simply be sprites. So um, we could have sprites in there that, that don't show anything. Um, but they're just used for imagery. Um, what we have is an object, which is just a image that allows some type of pro programming to take place on it. 
And um, our programming for our wall is that it's a solid object and that apples will bounce off it. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, add an apple in here. Now I place an apple here. Our uh, apples will uh, randomly go in any direction. Um, and then when we click on them, you'll get 50 points. You can add as many apples as you want. Um, if you uh, right click, uh, you can um, change the position, um, lay them on top of each other, or just simply uh, delete them. Um, yeah. So so we have four apples in there. And um, if we hit this green bar OK, then that means uh, we can uh, simply have this have this room here. We can always go back to it by by clicking on our rooms and then hit OK again. Uh, and now we can test our game to see uh, what we have going on here. So uh, we click on this, and here's a uh, a game. All right, there's a room. Um, it's only this big because we created this big. And what we want to do is we want to try and uh, click on apples. And we want them to disappear when we click on them. There we go. And then you get a score of 50. All right. So sure, it looks easy, uh, but it it is kind of a little bit difficult to click on it just correctly with your mouse. Um, and when we do that, it should randomly jump to another spot there we go so uh, it randomly jumped to another spot I don't know where it went because there's a lot of apples out here um, but now we have 150 so every time we click on an apple uh, the score will will go up by 50 all right all right so and we go back to our room so now that we have this uh, simple uh, program uh, where we have here, and we tested our game um, to see it run. Okay, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a background, and we do that. This is our create a background. Um, so we're going to load our background, and uh, in our folders that were given to us by a game maker we have a folder called backgrounds and one of them is for tutorial one which is what we're doing and there it says wood background so we open that up boom now we have a wood background and now uh, we loaded it all right we're gonna go back into our room so you double click on that and now we have our backgrounds and we click on this background there's a uh, wood background which I didn't name I could have named it but I didn't and now there's a background uh, we could use any imagery we want uh, that we find on the internet for backgrounds um, it'll set it across in the room um, you can use tiles you can use just simple colors um, all types of things you can put in there uh, so we just added this wood background and that was it that's a done deal um, the next thing we want to do is so I click this we want to add some sounds and uh, simple enough here's a little create a sound and we click on this create a sound we want to load a sound and once again uh, our game maker uh, gave us an automatic uh, folder with all types of beeps and boops and bops but we have tutorial one and the first thing we want to do in our um, sound is we want to do our click sound so we have um, music for the background explosions for bombs and clicks for when we go click on the um, apples or other fruits. So we OK. This is all great. Um, we don't have to do anything except click OK for that. Now I've been a little sloppy here. You can notice I didn't uh, give my room a name. Um, I didn't give my background. Uh, you know, wood background name. Um, there's only one background for this, so it doesn't really make a difference. And uh, you can see here, our sounds are going to come out. You're not going to know which one's which. This will be sound zero, and you have to memorize that. Um, I would want to uh, name that. Um, I would want to uh, name it 
uh, sound SND underscore click so that so that I know that that's the uh, that's actually the click sound it's the same thing all right I uh, should rename this uh, something uh, my background it's wood a um, little bit simpler because you can see this is wood just like you see that's a strawberry and this is a banana uh, you can see that that's the wood paneling slightly um, and we only have the one room so uh, we don't really have to give it a name here um, but if you have more than one room you're going to want level one level two uh, all types of things so let's just name this level one uh, just to just to uh, we could just name it just like that level one so so now we have our uh, our sound um, and what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to um, add it to uh, it's a click sound and when we when we click on the apple okay we want it to disappear from where we clicked it to a new random position and we want to get a score but uh, something else we want to do is uh, we can look under our main is we want to add a sound to it okay so we want to play a sound um, that exists and we're gonna bring that over here and now what's the sound we're gonna do is we only have the one so far but there'll be three sounds in this specific specific game and this one is gonna take place uh, this sound is gonna take place when we click on this Apple object it's gonna play the sound and we only have one sound to play when we click on these objects but you could have uh, a different sound for every one of these fruits so you can have like a, a squish for a banana and a pop for a cherry and uh, uh, you know some crunchy for strawberries uh, anything like that and then we have a choice here we can have the sound loop over and over again again like we're going to do for the background music so the background music is continue play over and over and over again and if you have a loop you're going to want uh, what's considered seamless uh, sound uh, clip which means uh, the end and the beginning kind of sound identical to each other so you don't know exactly where it is it's uh, starting and, and stopping but it plays over and over and you don't have a little skip in the middle there or some type of hiccup um, but what we're going to do is this isn't going to, it's not going to loop. It's only going to play once. So our options are we can have it play one time when we uh, click on the Apple object or when we click on the Apple object, uh, there'll be no sound. And what we can do is we can have you click on the Apple object and then this plays over and over and over again endlessly, which uh, can be annoying. Um, but some people like to create annoying games, so uh, the choice is yours on how that's going to happen. Uh, for our tutorial, we uh, we pick the false, which means it only it doesn't loop, but it only plays this sound wave clip only once. So we have that there. So now basically what we did was we just we just added um, we just added a sound so that whenever we click on this Apple object. Uh, not only does it jump randomly and, and add 50 points, but it also uh, plays uh, the sound that occurs. Um, it's the same thing now. We can, we can add uh, music to this, um, background music. And uh, we do that once again is we uh, create a sound to start with, and we load our sound. So that will be music. Well, and we open that up and of course uh, the proper thing we want to do is we want to um, name it um, you know sound music or something interesting like that And we can see this already put in uh, background music. We just hit OK. Uh, so this is all set, and this appeared over here. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, sound object. Okay. And um, we don't have a sprite for this. That's OK. Uh, we're going to call this, um, 
we can call it object underscore music so that we know uh, what it exists as and um, we add a create event and that create event we want is to play music okay and the music we want is going to be the sound music and we're going to want it to loop over and over again so we set it to true so we hit okay so now we have uh, we don't want any imagery in this I mean we could have imagery give like a little note or something if you wanted to but we don't want any of these things to represent you could even have a, a a sprite wall represent that image um, and then use it as a brick somewhere what you're gonna see um, when we create this uh, we go back to our um, we go back to our room um, and we are uh, looking for um, objects we have our music object and we can click somewhere and there it is a little question mark, a little blue question mark so now what happened there is is we just uh, simply added a sound now we can add all these little dots every time we add a dot it'll it'll add a new music uh, that loops and loops and loops um, but we added it to just our level one this particular music so we can have all types of music objects we could have a uh, different music object play on each level um, so now we hit our check mark and what we can do is we can play this and uh, all right, so here's our background music that's so fantastic. And there's our music when we click. And our score goes up. So you can see what we've created is we've created a simple game. Uh, and let's just solve this place. We'll close that up. So we have a score. And. Um, we have music and we have uh, all types of uh, wonderful things uh, taking place uh, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add all of our uh, fruit uh, to be uh, just like our Apple object so we're gonna we're gonna create and have them go in different directions we can have them go all the same directions that we had for our Apple or we can choose that uh, certain fruits go right and left and certain fruits go up and down um, we're gonna have them all bounce off the walls uh, just like we did with this one and then we're gonna have them all uh, jump to random positions uh, and we'll give them different scores but we'll play the same uh, sound click so we're gonna end up creating all of these objects in the same manner that we did our Apple objects Oops. Um, so so all that's there so we do this we get our uh, our blue uh, create an object and we pick uh, our object we want which would be a banana and we name it uh, object underscore banana and we add an event to create it and the event we have is that um, Let's uh let's do something crazy. Let's have it go in only those directions. And you can change the speed of this banana. Let's give it a speed of uh uh twelve. Alright, so we hit OK. And uh then the next thing we're gonna want to do is we're gonna add our collision all right with the wall. And uh, we're gonna want it to bounce, alright, off solid objects, just like it says and um, then we're going to uh, add our uh, mouse uh, left press and uh, when we do our, our left press we're gonna have it jump to a random position sounds good and then we're going to set a score so put the score in there and our score could be anything we can set the bananas a little bit harder, so we can set it to 70, we'll set it to 100. So uh, make it relative, so it continues. Instead of just changing our score to 100 every time we get in a banana, it puts it in there. And then the last thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to uh, pick our sound, all right, play a sound, and it's going to be our clicky click, and we don't want it to loop, so there we go. So there we go. Now we just did a, a banana object, and uh, here it is over here. And you hit OK. 
and now we're going to want to do a uh, cherry object so we create uh, a cherry and we'll call that object cherry and we'll <clears throat> add an event to it create now uh, we can do Let's do cherries only go at these angles. Uh, and we'll do a speed of, um, we have 12, we have 8. Let's do 4. Uh, cherry will be real, well, let's, yeah, let's do 4. Um, we'll be real slow. And um, we're going to want to do a collision with walls. We're going to want it to bounce off the walls. And then we're going to do our click. Uh, <clears throat> and it's going to go to a random location. And you're going to get only 25 points because it's easier, maybe. Hit OK. And we're going to add our sound that's wonderful like I said if we had if we had more sounds uh, we can add all kinds of uh, sounds to it false okay so now here we are we have our object cherry we hit okay and then our last fruit object is going to be the strawberry underscore strawberry and we create it and okay oh we want a speed of let's do 75 okay uh, we do our collision with Wall object. We have a bounce. Okay. We have our mouse click. I've pressed. Jumps randomly. Okay. Score. We can do. Um, can't remember if we did something here. So let's do. Uh, let's do seventy-five. Okay. What do I do for the speed? Oh, I, speed seventy five is crazy. Let's do um. Let's do fourteen. Oops. Fourteen. And the last thing we're gonna do is play our sound. And the sound we're gonna do is our click. It's only gonna play once. So now we have added all our uh, fruit objects. Uh, we're going to want to put it in our in our room. So we're going to look at uh, strawberry. Oh, there's a strawberry, and we want a banana. Oh, there's a banana. We want a cherry. There's a cherry. Uh, maybe a couple of cherries. Maybe another banana. And uh, something else we can do here is uh, we could we could have different levels, right? So we can place uh, bricks in different areas. Let's hit OK. Let's test our movie again. See what happens. All right. So here we have uh, strawberries. Cherries, bananas, and they bounce off of uh, these objects, these walls, those walls. And if we click on the strawberries. The strawberries are 25, or the cherries are, stra are 25. The strawberries are harder because they go faster. So there's another. 50. Oh wait, I didn't do relative on this. So you see that went to that went to uh, 75. So 
that one as well, I think it goes 100. See, it keeps going back to 75 because I didn't hit relative for the strawberry. So every time I hit the strawberry, no matter what my score is, it's going to go back to 75. So we don't want to change that. So, um, so we go back to our uh, game maker here. And we go to our uh, strawberry object. And when we hit our left pressed, we uh, set the score to 75. We didn't click on relative, so hit OK. So, so what I'm going to do now is I want to I want to make sure uh, that I that I did this. All right, it's relative. Okay, it says it here. Set score relative. So I want to make sure that uh, set score relative. So I have all the scores of relative. I forgot to do that. The strawberry there, but you could see that when I clicked on that strawberry, it was always going to 75. Okay, um, and that isn't something you want. You want to, I mean, you could do that. I guess uh, people learn that they lose points or they go back to a, a base point uh, as a trick. Uh, they think they have a really good score, and then all of a sudden they accidentally click on something and go right back to 75. Uh, that would be a real mean trick to do somebody, but it's possible you can do it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add bombs to this game so that um, you know we have our game where we click on fruit and when we click on the fruit we get points but uh, we can have bombs appear and if you click on bombs you lose uh, so this is what we want to do uh, now is we want to um, create a, a bomb object so we click over here and we look for our um, sprite and we're going to call this uh, our object, our bomb, and we're going to want to create event, and uh, we're going to want these to uh, randomly appear or uh, jump to a random uh, location. Press OK, um, and we'll save that right now. Uh, something we want to do is we want to add our our sound, so we want to load a sound, and we want our explosion. Um, and we're going to call this our uh, sound, and it could be uh, explosion, it could be bomb. So we'll call it our bomb sound. And we'll hit OK for that. All right, so uh, so we created bombs uh, that that randomly uh, appear. They jump to a random position when they're created. Um, they're not going to move around anywhere. They're just going to be random. And uh, we want to, uh, just like our fruit, uh, we want to accidentally left press on them. And uh, if we uh, accidentally uh, left press on them, uh, the first one we want to happen is uh, we want it to go boom. So we have our bomb goes boom, and we only want it to play once. And uh, what it's asking us to do is uh, to uh, do what's called a uh, a sleep. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna do our sleep, and we're gonna set uh, a random of one thousand milliseconds. Um, so we just hit OK on that. And uh, then we're going to want it to uh, show our uh, show our high score, which is uh, right here under our score. So we click that in there. And now um, we can pick no background, um, or we can pick a really cool background. Right. So we'll just use our back background that's wood um, and we can pick uh, different fonts for this um, font colors oops all right so uh, we can make it bold or bold uh, bold italic um, these are these are the uh, type of fonts that should be uh, easily um, accessed by uh, computers so um, you know we can go with something uh, simple um, 
something like that. We can change the color, the color of our uh, fonts. We can underline them. Um, we can change the side. We can have, um, you know, bold or regular. Uh, let's go up regular for this. Uh, different things we can pick there. So I said okay. Chiller was nice. All right, so we can see all these things. So we don't have to do much there. Just it asks us to do our uh, background. Asks us to kind of keep things uh, steady. So uh, the last thing uh, we want to do is we want to um, restart the game. And um, we can do this under the main tab too. Uh, you will see that under game there is our uh, restart our game. Pop that in there. Okay. So um, we have bombs get created, uh, and then um, if they're clicked, uh, the bomb the bomb sound goes off. Then you get a high score, and then you restart the game. So we can place that in there, and then we can test it. Oh, we gotta put bombs in there on this one. So now we're gonna get our bomb. Let's put a, let's just put two bombs in here, and hit OK. Test our game. So if we click on these bombs, well, let's get some points first. Oops. So 50 points, 100 points, wonderful music in the background, and some cherries, ooh that banana looks easy. So I got 250 points, I hit the bomb, alright, and now here's my high score. Uh, so and press escape to close, and now I start over with 0 points. So I have this uh, simple game right now, but this game's a little too easy, isn't it? I mean, you just avoid the bombs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make uh, bombs uh, randomly appear now um, in different areas. So we're going to do, uh, we could create just an object for bombs, but this uh, this music object we have, there's no sprite there. So uh, we can simply um, add uh, our alarm to it. All right, so um, we have uh, our set alarm. We place that in there. All right, so... Uh, sorry, what we want to do is we want to add an event. We want to add the alarm event. So we add uh, alarm zero uh, event. And then uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to um, – okay. So – just like I was saying before, we're going to add this event, and we're going to have the number of steps 60. So um, every 30 steps is one second, so this is two seconds, and we have in our alarm, alarm is zero. So we have our create, uh, play, sound music, and then set alarm zero to 60. Now we're going to add our event, which is our alarm clock, right? We have alarm equals zero. Uh, under this, we're going to have a create event. So when it gets to the alarm, we're going to have a create bombs, objects bombs. We just hit OK for that. And now we're going to go back and we're going to repeat our alarm to 60 every two seconds. This is OK. All right. So now uh, we have this in here. We hit OK. And we test our movie. So there's bombs. Oh, wait, there's another bomb. Oh, no. So I didn't get any, any score there. So let's try and get a score. You can see these bombs keep appearing on here. 
randomly. I still haven't got a score yet. Goodness. So these bombs keep appearing, keep appearing, and it makes it more and more difficult to click on fruit to get my score. And sooner or later I'm going to click on one of these bombs. And then I'll have a score. And then I press escape and start over. Okay? So, there, we just created a, a simple game. Uh, now, the last thing uh, we're going to want to do uh, here was start creating our more bombs, uh, setting our alarm, is uh, we're going to want to have some game information. Hey, the, the last thing we're going to do is uh, add a little help to our game. So uh, we add a little information simply by double clicking on game information and then we, uh, we can name the game Fruit Smash maybe uh, and we could say uh, click on Fruit to score, avoid the bombs, or die. All right, then you uh, click on this. You can type anything you want here. Uh, you can add points uh, for different fruit, anything, but we're going to change the fonts, all types of cool stuff. So we're going to click on that, and that saves it in there. Now when we play our game, so we play our game, we have our game here, and someone wants to know the rules, they simply click on F1 key, and the rules, fruit smash, click on fruit to score, avoid the bombs, or die. Alright, so there's our simple game, uh, this was uh, the end of the tutorial, uh, last one, uh, come back and we'll do the scrolling shooter game, and you can also go through the help section up here, to uh, get more tutorials online uh, from uh, yoyogames.com. We have all these free game tutorials uh, that you can go through. Uh, there's written documents and all the resources for the games too. I hope you uh, enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you next time.